Yeah, my dear students, welcome to Accounting Standard 20. We'll just refer it as EPS. Two things you have to remember. One is basic EPS. The other is diluted EPS. What is the way to find out basic EPS? Nothing but basic EPS is net profit. attributable to equity shareholder divided by weighted average number of equity shares. Net profit attributable to equity shareholder divided by weighted average number of equity shares. This is basic EPS. Numerator is nothing but the profit which belongs to the equity shareholders. After deducting all incomes expense means adjustment done as per AS5. Then take the adjustment of deferred tax and current tax as per AS22. And of course the preference dividend. And then what we get is nothing but weighted. What we get is net profit attributable to equity share. This is divided by weighted average number of equity shares. What does that weighted average mean? Nothing but we can say at any point of time, the number of shares are not constant. There is a change. Like say for example, at the beginning of the year, I had 5,000 shares. On 1st of April, on 30th of September, I issue somewhere around 2,000 shares. So obviously if somebody says, what is your closing balance? Then my closing balance is on 31st March is 7,000 shares. But don't you think 7,000 shares are not there for the whole year? So we need to find out what is the weighted average number of shares for the purpose of calculating EPS. So for weighted average number of shares, we will say 5,000 shares are there for all 12 months, which is 5,000. And 2,000 shares are there for 6 months. October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March, which means 1,000. You can say, sir, the weighted average number of equity shares is 6,000. Yeah, this is the basic working. Important point in basic EPS, what you have to remember is first bonus issue and then afterward I would talk about rights issue. Now whenever it is bonus issue, what are we supposed to do? In case of bonus issue, we need to restate the EPS of earliest reporting period we need to restate the EPS of the earliest reporting period and date of bonus issue is irrelevant for the purpose of calculating weighted average number of equity shares means we will ignore it only like let me ha have an example for you say during 5 6 my earnings are 5 lakhs during 6 7 my earnings are 6 lakhs number of equity shares Say 1st April 2005 is say 1 lakh. Bonus issue 2 share for 1 held. I am issuing 2 shares for every 1 share held. Then, my dear students, what are we supposed to do? See, first of all, we will find out what is the basic EPS. And let, let me write down this way that bonus issue 2 share for 1 held. The date of bonus is 1st January 2007. So dear students, as far as basic EPS is concerned, basic EPS will be nothing but 5 lakhs. Of course, I am talking with respect to 2005-2006. 5 lakh divided by 1 lakh into 12 by 12, which gives me 5 then I will calculate what is the basic EPS 
for 2006-2007 which is nothing but 6 lakhs divided by 1 lakh into 12 by 12 because these shares were already there and 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 I am issuing 2 shares for every 1 held so what should I do bonus shares 2 lakh now when did I issue on 1st January 2007 so if you look properly it is 3 months January, February, March but for the purpose of calculating bonus we will say not 3 by 12 we will say 12 by 12 which is 2 and whenever their bonus happens then what are we supposed to do we are supposed to adjust the EPS of the previous year or I can say restate the EPS of the previous year so we will be having something referred as restated EPS for 5 6 that is 5 lakh divided by the bonus effect that is nothing but total 3 lakhs 1.67 approximately so of course bonus issue this is what are we supposed to do hmm? then my dear students within this we have rights issue For right issue, what we are supposed to do is nothing but we have to bifurcate. Equivalent number of shares which are bonus and equivalent number of shares which are given as fresh. Because what is happening? Rights is issuing shares to the existing shareholders at a discounted price. Sorry. I am issuing the shares at discounted price. So the fair value of my share is 20. I am not issuing it at 20. I am issuing it at less than 20. So it is all about issuing the shares at a discounted price. That is nothing but rights issue, my dear. What are we supposed to do for rights issue? Nothing but whatever right shares are there, na, those right shares we should bifurcate into equivalent number of shares as bonus and equivalent number of share as fresh issue. Equivalent. Huh? We are going for rights issue only. But only for the purpose of accounting the standard says how many shares you are giving as fresh issue, how many shares you are giving as bonus issue, do that equivalence. Only for the purpose of calculating EPS. So for that you had something known as bonus factor or I can say something referred as right factor. What was that right factor? If you remember the formula fair value prior to right. divided by theoretical x right price how to find out theoretical x right price fair value prior to right fair value prior to right okay in two existing shares plus exercise price into right shares the whole divided by existing shares plus right shares Now, my dear students, for this purpose, let me do one question with you. So, it will be easier. Hmm? I'll first do question number two. That is with respect to EPS and partly paid up shares are there. Question number two, homework section. Hmm? In April 2010, A Limited issued 18 lakh equity shares of 10 each, rupees 5 per share was called up on that date, which was paid by all the shareholders. The remaining 5 was called up on 1-9-2010. All the shareholders, except one having 3 lakh 60 thousand shares, paid the sum on September 30th 2010 the net profit for the year ending on 31st march 11 is rupees 33 lakhs after dividend on preference shares and dividend distribution tax of 6.60 lakhs compute basic eps 
for the year ending on 31st March 11 as per AS20. Okay, friends. So let me solve this question for you. You have 18 lakh shares. Of rupees 10 each, 5 share was called upon and paid by all the shareholders. The remaining is called on 1 9. So can I say from April till August, the shares, 18 lakh shares, are partly paid up. Then what happens? On 1 9, everybody is paying except 3 lakh 60. So what I'll do is, I will bifurcate this into two category of shares. Those whose shares remain partly paid up for the whole year and other category is nothing but 14 lakh 40 thousand shares who become fully paid up. 14 lakh 40 thousand. Now from these are the two category. April to August and September to March. Fourteen lakh forty thousand shares into five by ten into five by twelve. But here it will be fourteen lakh forty thousand shares. They have become fully paid up. So into 10 by 10 into 7 by 12. Because I am talking with respect to those 1440 shares. They were partly paid up for 5 months and they are fully paid up for 7 months. So I am just taking into account converting those partly paid up into equivalent number of fully paid up. Whereas this 360,000 shares have remained partly paid up for the whole year. For the first 5 months also they are partly paid up. For the next... Seven months also they are partly paid up. So this comes to three lakhs. Eight lakh forty thousand. So this weighted average number share is eleven forty. Whereas here it will be seventy five thousand shares. Obviously, 360 is partly paid up. So, fully paid up will be 180 total. So, my weighted average number of equity shares would be how much? 1140 plus 180, which gives me 13,20,000. I hope you got my answer. Hmm? I'm doing working for 1440 separately and 360 separately. Now, my dear students, net profit is 33 lakhs. So, EPS will be how much? 33 lakhs divided by 13 lakh 20 thousand. Two point five is my EPS. So, the solution to question number 2, homework section. And of course, question 3 is a dilutive part. I will do one sh question of rights and then I come upon diluted. I don't want to do the whole theory now together. First, I will do EPS theory and then I go for DEPS. The following information is available for Raja Limited for accounting year 910. 
and 10 11 net profit for 9 10 is 25 lakhs net profit for 10 11 is 49 lakh number of shares outstanding prior to right issue is 12 lakh shares right issue one new share for every three outstanding that is 4 lakhs rights issue price is 22 last date to exercise is 30th june 2010 fair value of one equity shares immediately prior to exercise of rights is 28 rupees so first of friends solution to question number one past paper let's first find out right factor and bonus and all those things and then do the workings First of all, theoretical x right price means what is the theoretical x right price? Can I say my theoretical x right price is nothing but fair value prior to right, which is 28 into existing shares. What are my existing shares? 12 lakh. Plus right issue 22 exercise price into number of shares 4 lakhs the whole divided by 12 plus 4 so if you look properly 28 into 12 lakhs and 22 into 4 lakhs twenty six point five is my theoretical x rate price now what I get is right factor right factor is fair value prior to right what is the fair value prior to right twenty eight and twenty six point five one point zero five double six okay I'm just taking up to four digits now my dear students how many bonus shares and how much is because we are issuing four lakh shares so how much is bonus and how much should be considered as fresh issue how much shares are to be considered as fresh issue and how many shares are to be considered as bonus issue so very simple my existing shares which is 12 lakh into 1.05666920 is bonus of course here you will say sir we are having 925 because I have taken only 4 digits if I take all 12 digits then obviously I will also be getting 5 but I'm just doing round off and 4 lakh minus 67 920. How did I get 67 920? Nothing but existing shares 12 lakh into right factor minus 12 lakh. Okay, so out of 4 lakh, 67 920 is bonus. 332080 is nothing but fresh issue. Now, my dear students, what would be the basic EPS for previous year? For 9, 10. 25 lakhs. Divided by number of shares is 12 lakhs there is no nothing like a rights issue happening now nah. 2.0833 basic EPS for 10 11 49 lakhs
Now, what is the bonus? 67, 920. What should be the weight? 12 by 12. Date is irrelevant. Then 3 lakh 32,000. Zero eighty. That is the fresh issue. Three thirty two zero eighty. When did we give the rights issue? Thirtieth June. It means July, August, September, October, November, December, January, Feb, March. Nine months. Three point two three zero one will be my basic EPS for ten eleven and 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 if there is a bonus, which is nothing but in right and hidden element of bonus is there, so we need to restate the EPS for which year for nine ten. This is my restated EPS. Okay, friends. Here also we have the answer. Paid up shares is 332.075. This is 67.925. We are having a difference of 5 shares. The reason being, I have just taken 4 digits for rights issue. Uh, that is right factor. Okay, friends, now let me start with something known as DEPS, diluted earning per share. Now, what is this diluted earning per share, friends? Very simple stuff. The standard wants to give us effect of dilutive shares or I can say effect of potential shares. Potential shares means we are having some existing contracts. And this existing contract requires issue of shares like convertible debentures, convertible preference shares or share options, ESOP. So these are referred as potential shares. Now, don't you think these potential shares have an power to reduce my earnings? Because they are going to become shares. And if they are going to become shares, they are obviously going to reduce my earnings. So what are we supposed to do? The standard says give effect of such potential shares. Give the effect of potential shares. And see what is happening. So let me give the effect of potential shares. So what would happen? See if I am having convertible debentures. If I am having convertible debentures my dear students. So what is going to happen in case of convertible debentures? Can I say it is nothing but EPS we find out normal way. For the purpose of calculating the EPS, what we will say, we will take NPAESH, that is nothing but net profit available for equity shareholders or you can say attributable for equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares. No issues in this part, but, 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 but. On denominator side, what will come? Can I say number of equity shares to be issued on conversion of debentures? How many equity shares are you going to issue on conversion of debentures? And at the same time, my numerator is also going to change. What will be the effect on numerator, sir? The effect on numerator will be nothing but post-tax savings in debenture interest. Post-tax savings in debenture interest. That will be the effect on your 
न्यूमिरेटर पार्ट कन्वर्टिबल डिबेंचर्स सेम थिंग गोज विथ कन्वर्टिबल प्रेफरेंशियस बट इंस्टेड ऑफ पोस्ट टैक्स सेविंग्स इन डिबेंचर इंटरेस्ट वी विल से नथिंग बट प्रेफरेंस डिविडेंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ईसॉप्स स्टॉक ऑप्शन सो यर डीईपीएस विल बी नथिंग बट नेट प्रॉफिट एट्रीब्यूटेबल टू इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर दैट इज माई न्यूमरेटर डिवाइडेड बाई वेटेड एवरेज नंबर ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर दैट इज डन नथिंग विल कम ऑन द न्यूमरेटर साइड नथिंग बट इक्विवेलेंट नंबर ऑफ ऑप्शन टू बी इश्यूड विदाउट कंसिडरेशन Equivalent number of options to be issued without consideration. Say I am going to issue five thousand options, but this five thousand options I am going to issue not at free of cost because if I am going to issue free of cost, everything will be coming. But I am going to issue it at say half the fair value. Then only half of my equivalent number of half of my options are dilutive in nature. So I will take only those shares equivalent number of options which are dilutive. Yeah, how to find out this equivalent number? Nothing but options. Outstanding minus options into. Exercise price divided by fair value. Whatever are the options outstanding from that, we will deduct the options multiplied by exercise price divided by fair value. So this I will be getting. What are the number of options I am issuing at fair value? And this is the total options. So this is total options outstanding from that equivalent number of options to be issued at fair value, or how many options I have to issue it if I am getting the proceeds at fair value? That I will deduct. So I will be getting. without consideration okay friends let us do some questions with respect to this part and then our standard gets over once we discuss of question number 3 from homework section i am doing yeah while calculating diluted earning per share effect is given to all dilutive potential equity shares that were outstanding during the period explain of course also calculate diluted earning per share so i am going to do this work net profit for current year 8550 number of equity shares outstanding 20 lakhs 8% convertible debentures of 100 each 1 lakh which means 1 crore is the face value each debenture is convertible built into 10 equity shares interest expense for the year is 6 lakhs tax relating to interest expense is 30% see friends i am directly coming on the solution first of all my eps what is my eps net profit is 8550 and this is 20 lakhs 85 lakh 50000 divided by 20 lakhs Net profit eighty five fifty divided by number of equity shares twenty lakhs. Four point two seven five. Now my DEPS eighty five lakh fifty thousand. That is net profit available to equity shareholder divided by twenty lakhs. Add post tax saving in debenture interest. So if you look properly, six lakhs. Into seventy percent, that is four lakh twenty thousand. How many debentures we are going to issue, friends? Ten. So one lakh number of shares, the number of debentures into ten, so ten lakh. Into nine by twelve, 
y नाइन बाई ट्वेल्व वेरी सिंपल माय डियर दिस इंटरेस्ट ऑफ सिक्स लैक्स इज ओनली फॉर नाइन मंथ्स इट इज नॉट फॉर ट्वेल्व मंथ्स यू हाउ डिड यू कम टू नो सी फ्रेंड्स इफ माय नंबर ऑफ डिबेंचर इज वन लैक इट्स फेस वैल्यू पर डिबेंचर इज हंड्रेड सो द टोटल कम्स टू वन करोड़ on this 1 crore we should have an interest of 8% which comes to 8 lakhs instead of having 8 lakhs the question says it is 6 lakhs so what does it mean and they say this is an expense of 6 lakhs this is what the question says 6 lakhs is the expense so so my dear students it means don't say it is outstanding it means that i have issued the debentures in current year If I issue the debentures, I pay. I have an expense of eight lakhs. This expense of eight lakhs is for twelve months. I'm having an expense of six lakhs for how many months? Six lakhs into twelve divided by eight lakhs, my friends, it comes to nine months. It means the debentures have been issued for current year, and only nine months have passed. So I'm giving the effect of nine by twelve. So now, the amount would be eighty nine lakh seventy thousand. That is eighty five fifty plus six lakhs into seventy percent post tax savings in debenture interest. And here, eighty nine seventy divided by twenty seven. Fifty friends, I get something three point two six one eight. So this is my DEPS, and this is nothing but my EPS. Clear. So let us do one more question on DEPS, and then we end up this revision session. I'll be doing a DEPS question that is options. This rights issue I have completed. Okay, very small question. Messrs A Limited. Has eight lakh equity shares outstanding on first April two thousand thirteen. The company earned a profit of twenty lakhs during the year thirteen fourteen. The average fair value per share during thirteen fourteen was rupees forty. The company has given share option to its employees of rupees one lakh equity shares at an option price of rupees twenty. Calculate basic EPS and diluted EPS. friends what would be my basic eps 8 lakh equity shares outstanding on 1st april and this is 20 lakhs so it's very simple Net profit is twenty lakhs. This is eight lakhs. My basic earning per share is two point five. Diluted EPS. Now, what would be diluted EPS? Twenty lakhs. Divided by number of options. This is eight lakhs. Is eight lakhs number of options? How many options are there? One lakh. So one lakh minus one lakh into twenty divided by forty. Exercise price divided by fair value. So one lakh. Into twenty divided by forty, fifty thousand. So one lakh minus fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. So twenty lakh divided by eight lakh fifty thousand, which gives me two point three five. Two nine. 
Yeah, friends. So this is how your dilution goes. This is nothing but equivalent number of options that will be given without consideration. How to find out equivalent number? Number of options minus op total number of options minus options issued into exercise price divided by fair value. Okay, friends. So this much from my side as far as AS20 is concerned, basic and diluted. In basic, what is important is bonus rights, diluted, convertible and the options. Let us end up here. Thank you very much.